So in my practice, when I'm recommending a running shoe or when a patient asks me what type of shoe they should be running in, I first try to educate them on the proper way to run and the stride that they should be achieving. And then I try to inform them that using a minimalist shoe will help to reduce running rate, I'm sorry, running injuries. But we, again, don't have the concrete evidence in medical-based literature to prove this. Uh, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that's out there that has demonstrated people are seeing reduced injury. We even have patients in my practice that have presented with knee pain that weren't runners and we put them into a more minimalist type shoe or shoe with no cushioning or heel and we're seeing a great reduction in their knee pain. The current approach to prescribing shoes uh, based on our pronation control systems that are implemented in these shoes show no reduction in injury. But we know looking at, at the evidence-based medicine from 1950 to 2007 that this isn't evidence-based and there's no studies that, that will demonstrate running shoes prevent or even decrease or help with injury rates. The Marine Corps uh, did a study on shoes and they had placed their subjects into shoes based on the plantar foot surface and found that there was uh, no influence on the injuries that occurred based on the shoe that was given for their foot type. We know that when we look at cushioning, we see that our, our foot control seems to improve as cushioning is lost. And, and we know that foot control accounts for the majority of running injuries. So the more we can control the foot or the muscular activity involving the foot and ankle, we can decrease injury. And we have studies that show the more cushion is lost from a shoe, the more foot control we will gain. So when you, when you look at a runner that's wearing a traditional running shoe and they're striking on their heel, or even if they're not striking on their heel, they won't institute the proper shock absorbing uh, mechanisms that are available to help reduce injury and their body is more or less becoming more susceptible to injury. A lot of the critics will say that running barefoot or running in a minimalist shoe will put you at risk for stress fractures. And we know that stress fractures are the result of, of two things. That's either overuse or osteoporosis. Now there's actually been studies that have looked at stress fractures with respect to stride rate. And we know that by decreasing your stride, which is what a minimalist shoe or running barefoot allows you to do, we see a 10% reduction in stress fractures. So there has been nothing to date that, that actually shows an increased rise in stress fractures by running barefoot or running in a minimalist shoe. Now if, if you do not transition properly and you begin running too fast or going too far in a minimalist shoe or barefoot, then it's possible to see a stress fracture. But again, this, this is a result of overuse not the shoe or the, the way of running specifically. The American Academy of, of Pediatrics actually recommends that children do not begin wearing shoes until it's necessitated by the environment. Uh, we have studies looking at children, uh, specifically 2300 children were, study, were studied and they found that wearing shoes during the developmental stage was detrimental to the medial longitudinal arch. Uh, we also have another specific study that looked at uh, children wearing shoes uh, and found that at an early age those wearing shoes had an increase in flat foot deformities by approximately threefold. In achieving proper running form, what you want to do is land on your forefoot more so than your heel or your rear foot. So you want to avoid heel striking and land on the forefoot, not completely on the toes, but ar around the area of your fourth and fifth metatarsal heads, which is the outside or the lateral part of your forefoot. And in doing that, you want to take very short strides. Now in doing this, we actually know that you need to transition properly. And we, we've recommended something called the 10% rule in transitioning. And this has been looked at in literature and I think a lot of uh, professionals are recommending this specifically, but you should only be implementing your amount of mileage by 10% or starting out at 10% of what you typically run. You know, I'll have patients show up with bags of shoes and bags of orthotics that 
are not fixing their plantar fasciitis that they've had for, for years. And at that point, what are we forced to do? Some of these patients have already even had surgery and we're implementing a minimalist shoe and, and act, getting them to change their gait or the way they walk and stand. And we're seeing a, a, a marked decrease in pain as a result of this. I like to make the comparison of if you were to jump off of a chair or a ladder barefoot, how would you land on your foot? And most people will tell you that they'll land on their forefoot because landing on their heel tends to hurt. And it, it only makes sense that you can reduce the amount of force being transmitted through your leg by landing this way. So it makes no sense of why would you want to run 26.2 miles while landing on your heel when we can land on our forefoot and greatly reduce the stress.